This is a ChemCab implementation of example 7.2 from your textbook. Uh, what we're going to do first is establish the engineering units for the simulation. We're going to select English units because the feed specifications are given in pound moles per hour and the product or the final requirement is a reactor volume in cubic feet. Uh, next thing we need to do is select our components hydrogen, methane, benzene, toluene, and biphenyl. Once that's done, we go into our thermodynamic wizard. We can take the low temp the minimum temperature for this range, okay. Maximum temperature of 212 is too low since the reaction occurs at 1200, so we'll raise that to 1400. Uh, minimum pressure of one atmosphere is fine. Maximum pressure needs to be above the 494 specified, so we'll call it 600. The wizard's recommending the PSRK method, but the problem statement specified Peng Robinson, so we'll override that in the thermodynamic setting window. So we have our basic setup complete. Now we need to add the feed stream. We need to add the product stream or product. We need to put the kinetic reactor itself in. I'll reorient that. Then we'll put the feed to the reactor product from the reactor, tidy it up a little bit, basic reactions in place. Okay, next thing to do is establish the property of the feed stream. First thing we'll do is give it a name, then set the temperature which is given to be 1200 specified. Pressure is 494 PSIA. You'll notice there are component flow rate units already in pound moles per hour, so we can move those directly in from the problem statement. check you can see the total flow rate matches up with what's in the problem statement so this is good let's go ahead and label this product stream as well we don't know any of its properties yet officially so all we'll do for now is give it a name okay for the reactor itself if we want to name it Now we're ready to put the kinetic data in. So we added the reactor unit op data. This problem has one reaction. We're running at 494 PSIA. For now, we'll neglect pressure drop. We're going to use a standard rate expression. Plug flow, vapor phase reaction, adiabatic with a specified conversion. And don't forget to specify one of the reactants the conversion. Next we have to look at this more specifications tab. We're not doing a detailed design so we can neglect the PFR specifications page, part of the page. The concentration options correct moles per volume. We don't need to worry about the partial pressure because that's not a form in which our kinetics are given. Uh, our reactor our reaction rate concentrations are uh, kilomoles per cubic meter so we need to convert these to kilomoles per cubic meter. When ChemCAD reads the activation energy, it's going to take this activation energy unit per this molar flow unit. So the activation energy was given as 5200 calories per mole. Since our molar flow rate here is kilomoles, we need to make sure that we tell ChemCAD that we're giving the activation energy in kilocals per kilomoles. Uh, for 
our current kinetic expression, this mass flow field is ignored, but we do want to make sure we set the time base to be in seconds. Now we can just enter the given reaction data. For our components, we have hydrogen as a reactant, we have toluene as a reactant, we have methane as a product, we have benzene as a product. So we'll go ahead and put the stoichiometric coefficients in here. And remember that the hydrogen has a, an exponent of 0.5. The toluene is 1. The products have values of 0 for their exponential factors, but we can't do a zero or we'll assume the stoichiometric coefficient, so we enter 1e e minus 6 for each of those. And our reactor reaction data is good, so we should be ready to run. So we'll run the unit operation. It runs fine. It's giving us a total volume of 37.58 cubic feet. Uh, when they ran this uh, in HISIS, they got 3660 cubic feet. This, that's pretty close to this. In Aspen Plus, they got 3774. But they also accounted for some pressure drop in the reactor system. So let's go ahead and see if that accounts for all the difference by adding 5 psi pressure drop to the reactor. We'll run it again. And we get 3785, which is a little bit larger. But it's in the same ballpark, so uh, this is a, an acceptable result. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this as That's all there is to it.